When it comes to visualizing data, all else being equal, simpler is better. We want to make life as easy as possible for our audience. The less time and effort our audience has to spend interpreting our visualizations, the more time and effort they can spend understanding and engaging with our message. Let's take a look at an example. This chart depicts data collected from a firm that has surveyed its customers and asked them questions like, do you understand our brand promise? Customers can then respond to each question with five choices, ranging from strongly disagree to strongly agree. Is this a horrible chart? Is it so confusing and so overwhelming that I need to go take a nap after looking at it? No, of course not. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this chart if our goal is to present all the data to our audience so that our audience can evaluate the data and derive their own insights from it. If our target output is a report that provides a detailed fact base, this chart might be pretty good. But what if we're giving a live presentation? And what if we have a story to tell and we want our audience to follow our narrative? For example, I'm alarmed about the proportion of customers that don't understand our brand promise. And I want to seize your attention and motivate you to take action to remedy this problem. As I'm passionately making my case for developing a clearer brand promise, my audience is very likely going to start examining and thinking about some of these six other questions shown in the chart. Of course, I could just highlight the relevant parts of the chart, like so. But at this point, we have to start to ask ourselves, why bother showing all of this detail only to subsequently try to hide it. We need a simpler approach. Taking simplicity to its most extreme form, we arrive at nothing more than a simple number. No charts, no tables, no diagrams, just plain text. At StoryIQ, we call this format an impact metric because by stripping out all the unnecessary complexity, we increase the impact of the metrics that we want to place the most emphasis on. Rather than showing a detailed breakdown of the results or using more complex metrics like net agree that might require an explanation, we can just show the sum of the strongly disagrees and disagrees to this question and frame the result in simple language as 65% of customers don't understand our brand promise. A slide like this is so simple and so easy to create. It's nothing more than a text box. We've just emphasized the key number by making it really large and highlighting it with an orange hue that was used to encode disagree and strongly disagree in the original chart. We've also been very concise in our selection of words describing the impact metric. All of these design choices result in a slide that provides very little opportunity for distraction. Because this approach is so simple, it provides an opportunity to inject a little bit of graphic design flair. We could reimagine our slide like this. The image helps evoke some feelings that we may want to stir in our audience. In this case, some empathy for the confusion that our customers might be feeling. When presenting this slide, we could humanize our presentation a little bit more by sharing the story of the woman in the image. She's one of our survey participants named Ariel. We could say that Ariel is one of many customers we talked to who liked our product offering, but felt confused and unsure of what our brand promise is all about. So we need a strategy to help Ariel understand our brand promise and what it means to her. Here's another example of an impact metric with an image. This time, we've focused on the positive story of the 60% of customers who would recommend us to family or friends. In both slides, there's a simple formula that we're following for a graphic impact metric. First, we're choosing a relevant background image. 
In this case, we've got some happy customers pointing at our impact metric as if to recommend us. Second, we're making sure that the image isn't too busy or distracting. Here we've just cropped out the happy customers so that there are no distracting background components. And third, we're making sure that the text in our impact metric is easy to read and stands out against the background. In this case, because the image is cropped, we have a white background, which makes it particularly easy to ensure that our text stands out and is easy to read. A quick alternative to cropping out people and objects is just to crop the entire image like this to create some white space to overlay our text on. Alternatively, we can use dark hues or black for our background and then use light colors or white for our fonts. Like this example, emphasizing that our brand is not perceived as being tech savvy. If we don't follow these rules and we choose a busy image like this one and then try to overlay text on it, we end up with a slide that's distracting and difficult to read. We don't have to limit our impact metrics to one number per slide. A suite of multiple impact metrics can still be a simple and elegant alternative to a chart or table. For example, we might start our presentation with this single graphic impact metric showing our most important metric of all, the 60% of customers who would recommend us to a friend or family member. Then we ask our audience, what's driving this positive result? Now we will emphasize the three areas where our brand is doing best. So we want to emphasize that our brand is trustworthy, high quality, and value for money. And that these three positive areas contribute to our overall performance as a brand that customers would recommend to a friend or family member. We could lay all three impact metrics out on a slide like this. Three photographs could start to get pretty busy. So in this case, I've just added some icons. These icons are straight from the free icon library in Microsoft PowerPoint. Simple iconography like this results in a slide that's still simple and free of clutter while leveraging some imagery that helps our audience connect with our story. So if you want to lead your audience through a story, consider whether you can distill down to a few simple numbers that really drive home your point. If so, it might be time to try the simplest form of data visualization, impact metrics. To learn more, please check out storyiq.com. If you've learned something useful, please like this video. And for more data storytelling tips and tricks, subscribe to the channel.